Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Office Bloke Daz. I'm Office Bloke Mike. And I'm Office Bloke Max. Three of us here today in attendance. Hi. Uh, if Patreon's your thing, check out the link in the description below. Loads of stuff on there, all starting for a bargain price of just... At £1.50 a month. How much? £1.50. There you go. Yeah. Check it out. Loads of stuff Cheap on there. Chips. Uh, every killer on the loose explained in 14 minutes. Every killer on the loose. On the loose? Oh, so these yeah. are all out still, are they? I've been watching a lot of Crime Watch over here of mm. late. It's on during the day now. Yeah. Um, mm. So I record it and watch it when I get home at night. Yeah. I've, I've, Believe it or not, I've actually known two people that have been on it. No, yeah. <laughs> no, right. believe that. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't grass, I didn't grass them up though. I just left it because they didn't do anything bad. Um, one of them was wanted for fraud, and the other one was um, a bit more worse. But it wasn't wasn't him, if you know yeah. what I mean. Right. He was just an accomplice, so I just let it go. Mm. You know, um, I was at school when the first one, the bad one, yeah. I was yeah. at school, and I spoke to the teacher, and the teacher said to me, "You'd probably need to go to the police." So I said, yeah, I'll do that. And I went, I ain't grassing no one. Nah. Not you don't <laughs> grass around here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I won't yeah. be here today if I grass on him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The other one was just a fraud thing. And the, the guy gave me money um, for doing a job for him. Yeah. Um, and then he uh, then he appeared and he wanted him for a fraud. And like, it was, I think it was like credit card fraud or something like yeah. that. And uh, I just thought, guy, guy give me a bonus when last time I did a job for him. Yeah. Give you so, cash. Give me cash. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. So I was like, it's probably yeah. counterfeit. <laughs> my, not my <laughs> problem, yeah, Good yeah, luck yeah. finding him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's like, but you don't really, uh, I'm, I'm watching some of the, these are like unsolved cases I've been watching, so the killers yeah. are still uh, out there. Uh, mm -hmm. right, so this okay. is uh, every killer on the loose explained, but some of them, are, I guess some of these are, right. uh, I don't know who they are. I've never heard of any no, of them. No, of them. no, I don't think I have. Uh, guess we'll find out as we go along. Let's go. Yeah. New Bedford Highway Killer. The New Bedford Highway Killer apparently got his thrills from murdering vulnerable women in broad daylight along Massachusetts highways just to see if anyone would notice. In the late okay. 1980s and early 1990s, his stalking grounds were lonely truck stops and deserted roadside areas around New Bedford. He'd cruise along, scoping out sex workers and luring them in, probably with him asking for some of the usual services. But then once he had them isolated, bam, he just killed them in the most horrific ways. Bodies were just discarded along the highway shoulders in plain view like they were garbage. Or even sicker, some victims were positioned in staged mock-up crime scenes like having their bodies purposely redressed or dismembered into weird poses. Kind of vaguely remember yeah. this. Really? Something's coming back to me about that when he just mentioned that there. But uh, Sounds... sex workers just have a, run a massive risk, don't oh. they? Yeah. Hey? I know. Yeah, it's not the trade to be in, really. I feel like they made a film it. about this. Yeah. Hmm? I feel like they, may, they may have made a film about yeah. this. Yeah. It rings a bit of a bell, but. Henry? Could it be? I'm having a psychic moment there. <laughs> A few were even found with their faces or heads mutilated. In this case, the psychopath was showing off his handiwork, leaving lipstick-stained cigarette butts or jewelry he stole from the victims as some sort of calling card of catch me if you can, almost taunting the cops racing to catch him before he struck again. Despite an intensive media firestorm around the case, the guy just kept on killing for the better part of a decade, wrecking up at least nine confirmed victims, but probably way, way more. Then he just seemed to disappear and stop his killing spree as mysteriously as it started. Like he got yeah, he his got fill bumped. of thrills and yeah. could walk away scot-free without ever getting caught or identified. The Phantom Killer. Let's go back to the summer of 1946 in the towns of Texarkana along the Arkansas-Texas border. People were already on the edge of World War II with a mad Nazi dictator putting people in concentration camps when the first attacks happened. A young couple brutally murdered by a phantom killer while enjoying date night at a Parkland lover's lane. The killer struck under the cover of night, beating them to death and shooting the pair with a 32 caliber pistol. But weirdly enough, he also took the time to crush their skulls with some sort of heavy object, leaving bone and brain matter gruesomely scattered. Just a few weeks later, he struck again in equal fashion. Another couple assaulted at a secluded romantic hotspot. The female victim's eyes gouged out as she lay dying. He clearly had a thing for couples and loved to kill them in the worst ways possible. Some claim he wore a white mask or hood, while others swore it was just the face of an ordinary man. The murders sparked one of the largest manhunts in American history at the 
time, with thousands of law enforcement officers from across state lines joining the pursuit. Still, no concrete evidence ever emerged to hang the killings on any one suspect. Long Island Serial Killer Now, you'd probably not have to worry about this particular one if you weren't, say, a sex worker on Long Island who liked using Craigslist to get customers for your business. The unidentified Long Island serial killer lured them from sites like Craigslist with the promise of paid encounters, but instead of paying... When you watch movies mm. and someone's like Psycho or whatever, it's always yeah. Craigslist. It's, uh, it's, yeah, yeah. it's mentioned in it. It's, it's an unhinged like <laughs> platform. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Went to buy a bike off Craigslist and got my arm chopped off by yeah. a Psycho. Paying <laughs> yeah. them, he murdered these women in cold blood. His first known victims were discovered in 2010 along that stretch of Ocean Parkway near Jilgo Beach. So we essentially have an operating serial killer unchecked for nearly 10 years, who as mm. of now is still free. The bodies were just scattered along that highway corridor like trash. Some were severely decomposed and others had sacks over their heads. One victim was a male dressed in women's clothes as if to make fun of him being a woman in man's body. Authorities believe the Lisk, as they call him, was just indiscriminately killing anyone involved in sex work. It didn't matter if you just gave blowjobs to truckers in your free time hustle or were a full-on prostitute, he seemed to really have a thing for targeting sex workers. Over the years, they've discovered 10 sets of remains linked to the psychopath. And despite a massive search for him, nothing ever came forward. As we're speaking right now, the Long Island serial killer could be prowling for his next victim. So watch mm. out just in case you're a woman trying to make a quick buck. La Mata Viejitas. Perhaps an interesting change, this was a female serial killer. This female yeah, serial many killer who was no. never caught basically preyed on the most vulnerable members of society, little old ladies. Literally. Ah. Her typical method of operation was to dress up all friendly like, pose as a nurse or caretaker, and sweet talk her way into these women's homes when they were all alone. Then once inside, she would overpower them, strangle them to death with her bare hands, and make off with whatever cash or valuables she could grab. To put your hands on someone's neck and see the life drain out of their eyes multiple times takes, at the very least, some sort of weird dedication to the craft. La Mata Viejitas did this over and over again for years across Mexico City. Witnesses described her as this kind-looking middle-aged woman who could so easily fool the elderly into a false sense of safety and security. And we're not talking young, vibrant seniors here either. Most of her victims were in their 80s and 90s, in case capable of putting up That's any bad. kind of real fight against yeah. her. For That's proper low end, isn't it? That's it's very cowardly, isn't it? It is. I mean, killing people's bad as it is. Yeah, we... you know, it's probably the lowest you can go. <clears throat> yeah. Killing older people. Frail older people. Yeah. It's terrible. I saw a fraud yesterday where someone pretended to be a uh, like a spiritual healer. Mm. And uh, they got the woman to go empty her life savings right, yeah. and exchanged it for flour. And I'm like, wow. who the fuck falls for that? I mean, yeah. I'm like, I don't care how old you are. To be fair, that, that's natural selection by that yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, it was 200 grand. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Four bags of flour. Expensive nice. loaf of bread. Yeah. That is a proper scam, that, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. For over a decade, this Mate Viejitas killer stayed under the radar and maintained her double life. Estimates put her victim count anywhere from two dozen all the way up to around 50 elderly ladies murdered wow. across Mexico City and nearby areas. Rainbow Mania. Maniac. It's the early 2000s, and one day you see this guy at a gay bar in Brazil. It seems normal enough, just another dude looking to mingle and have a good time. He approaches you and asks you if you would like a drink, and you'd oblige. Now, at the time, you didn't know that you just drank a cocktail laced with a rape drug, and you were about to pass out. Soon you'd be left in the hands of Brazil's worst serial killer at the time, the Rainbow Maniac. He'd scope out these Brazilian gay clubs and bars. I wonder how many people nowadays take a drink off somebody. I know. That they don't know. They're not like yeah. if you go into a bar and then someone comes up to you and goes, hey, I've just seen your notes over there. Yeah. Would you like a drink? <laughs> and went like that and give you one, you'd be like, uh, fucking no chance. <clears throat> yeah. You, oh, you yeah. drink it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely no chance. If the bartender's making it, then yeah, you'd probably like, you'd be feel a lot safer sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, say, can yeah. I get you a drink and you're there? Yeah, at you're the there, time, yeah. yeah. Fa absolutely fine. But no. you wouldn't just take a drink, would you? Know, if someone's saying, no. do you want no. a drink? Because, I mean, it's pretty well flagged up these days as well, isn't it? Yeah. Like these drugs, but your people drugging other people with yeah. a drink and stuff like that. So you think most, certainly most younger people would be right on top of something like this Yeah, nowadays. when you go in some of the pubs now in town, in Manchester, they have, uh, there's like loads of signs up about uh, drugging. Oh, it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it must have been like, a, some of them look quite old, like a, yeah. you know, they've been pasted on the wall and been peeled a little bit. And stuff yeah, like yeah. That. But it's, um, I guess they went through like a, a real sort of like 
explosion of it. So like people, I think there was. Yeah. I think there was wasn't a yeah. few years ago, but I think people are pretty well clued up on it these yeah, days. Yeah, I think now you can guess. get like a. I know girls mostly have like a bobble that you can just take off and put over your drink. That sounds like one oh, straw right. hole in. Right. I think that does quite well. Yeah. It is. It's gonna sound bad. It's really easy to spike a drink, like in terms of. It's yeah, not like talking for yeah. experience. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> when you think about it, if you get the max. <laughs> boom. <laughs> it's a bit of magic powder. Bosh. <laughs> uh, Come with me. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it's, it's it's so easy to do because mm. it's, it's just if someone's drunk, you're not paying attention, are you? No, I know. You're making it yeah, hard, making a joke. Someone's gonna spike straight in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're done. Mm. Ours even use personal ads like single gay guy looking for a bottom to land a date with some unsuspecting guy. Once he got them feeling comfortable and safe when they were alone and isolated, he just snapped, putting them to insane amounts of torture as he apparently hated gays. He'd put them wow. through full on yeah. torture sessions like the fact that a lot of the bodies showed signs of prolonged suffering through stab wounds, blunt force trauma, anything he could get his hands on. Some were dismembered and had parts removed or rearranged into odd poses before finally killing the victims. From the crime Show scene evidence, people. it's clear he took tremendous pleasure in torturing and mutilating those guys before finally killing them. He'd take it a step further by intentionally spoiling the crime scenes with emblems and imagery from LGBTQ pride celebrations as some sort of sick statement about his motives. Bodies surrounded by rainbow flags, wigs, and flamboyant attire, all used as instruments of hatred toward his victims' identities. For over half a decade across the Sao Paulo region, he has killed at least 14 victims. The West Mesa Bone Collector. It all started back in 2009 yeah, in Albuquerque, one. New Mexico. Oh, right. This guy was just casually driving along the West Mesa and decided to pull over into this deserted area. Except he wasn't stopping for a casual stretch break or anything like that. No, he starts digging in the desert soil. And that's when the real horror emerges. He had brought along a crate full of human bones and remains that he just started scattering and burying out there in the middle of nowhere, just intentionally tossing the skeletons out like garbage. When a woman walking her dog stumbled upon this grisly oh, scene, dog. the authorities were called. <laughs> it just seems in a remote area. <laughs> yeah. It's in of Albuquerque or somewhere, yeah. New Mexico or something. And he's just walking me dog. Just strolling around, yeah. <laughs> On a 48 mile walk. Yeah. 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 Fall down. The scene apparently was so gruesome that a lot of the police officers called to the scene just straight vomited or just left. You see, those scattered bones ended up being the remains of at least 11 different women, possibly more, who had all gone missing years earlier around 2003. This Where guy had held onto their skeletons and body parts for years Shit. before just deciding to toss them like they were nothing. No remorse, no humanity, just another bundle of trash to be thrown out as they're taking up too much space. Despite recovering tons of DNA evidence and doggedly pursuing every lead for over a decade, the authorities still haven't identified the guy. So even now, he's out there, mm. walking among us, maybe even watching the case unfold and waiting to add you into his collection. The Jeff Davis Ooh. 8 Killer. Through 2005, this quite rural area of Jeff Davis County, Georgia, was hit by the discovery of two bodies, an elderly woman and her son, murdered execution style in their home. Over the next oh. few years, six more people across two separate residences only miles apart were found killed similarly. Bound, beaten, and gunshots at close range like professional hits. A professional killer was out for blood with no reason as to why. At the time, it seemed like absolute overkill for people living in rural Georgia. From the crime scene evidence, it's clear he took some kind of pleasure in the post-mortem violations. Reports indicated several victims were found kneeling with their arms outstretched, almost like they were positioned in a religious pose like praying to God, even though they were already dead. Beyond the posing, evidence also suggested he took immense pleasure in simply mutilating the bodies themselves through excessive force and overkill. Many victims had crushing head wounds from severe crushing well beyond what was necessary to kill them. To this day, the person or persons responsible for the Jeff Davis 8 murders remains unidentified and at large Shit. over 15 years after the wow. last victim. Incredible. The eastbound... I can understand, like, uh, someone getting away with one. Like, mm. and they can't find the killer or, yeah. you know, I mean, they can't, you know, mm. they're still struggling to find from whatever happened. But if you're killing, like, eight people, surely there's, like, evidence that you've gathered that takes you to somebody. Yeah. You'd think so, wouldn't you, with that many? Yeah. You know, Boys, I'm guessing some of these places are maybe in the middle of nowhere, and you know, mm. such a big place as well, because mm. most of them in the, look like they're in the states, don't they? Yeah. So, yeah. 
We've had Mexico and Brazil as well. You know, yeah, maybe like over here, you've got CCTV absolutely mm. everywhere. I'm guessing there, maybe it's between towns, it's maybe not quite so much covered as yeah. it is, say, somewhere over here. If you go through a town here, even down streets and roads, everyone's got CCTV, yeah. ring doorbells and all sorts, aren't they, these yeah. days? So yeah. maybe the, just if you're not caught physically, then people literally just don't know because there's no evidence of yeah. who's been there. It might be manpower as well. Like, because it's such a big sure. state, you might not even have enough money to finance enough yeah. officers. Yeah, to that's true. Have enough time to even look into it. Yeah, that yeah. just eight people. I would, would have thought it leaves you enough it's evidence to find someone. It's yeah. a lot in there. Yeah. Yeah. Strangler. This was the psycho at the time terrorizing the highways and truck stops along the I 80 corridor back in the 80s and 90s. Think of just rolling up to a quiet rest stop to take a breather and stumbling right into the clutches of a deranged serial killer. The eastbound would cruise those long, lonely stretches from Texas all the way up to Ohio, zeroing in on prostitutes and drifters. Lures them in with that disarming smile of his, gets them alone, and then snaps. Strangles them with whatever he can get his hands on. Belts, clotheslines, or whatever he had at the time. On top of all that, he had this ritualistic way of arranging the bodies. Clothes neatly folded, hands crossed over the chest like some sort of burial ceremony cooked up in his mind. After killing the women, many of whom were beaten and showed signs of prolonged torture, he would grotesquely redress their bodies in items of their own clothing like wigs or bras. Then he'd toss their remains off secluded exit ramps or onto desolated areas near the highways like they were garbage. The cops were at a loss for years. How do you catch a killer who hunts across thousands of miles mm. of open roads? That's it. The investigation mm. yeah. spanned so many jurisdictions info was getting piped back and forth like a game of crazy telephone. In the end, they linked him to anywhere between 6 to 40 murders wow. Depending on who you ask. The Good. Albuquerque serial killer. So, since the beginning of 2022, the bodies of several women have been discovered across the Albuquerque metro area, many of them victims of sexual assault and horrific beatings before being murdered execution style. What wow. makes this serial killer so chilling is just how bold and accelerated the killings have been. At first, the bodies were turning up every few months, but more recently, the pace has been rapidly increasing, with multiple victims being found found discarded in alleyways, vacant lots, and even public parks, some within days of each other. Understandably, this has created an atmosphere of terror across Albuquerque, especially in lower-income neighborhoods mm. where the killer seems to be hunting most frequently. Despite ramped-up police patrols and investigations, he always seems to be several steps ahead, taunting authorities almost. From reports of him potentially driving different cars and taking trophies from victims to the audacity of dumping bodies in public areas, you get the sense of someone really loving this pattern of violence against the vulnerable. What's particularly scary is trying to game out this psychopath's motivations. We don't know if he's just an angry misogynist targeting sex workers, getting more bold and accelerating a homicidal urge with each kill, or if he's simply a nomadic drifter who brings his murderous habits to each new city. The Colonial Park... Or a cop. Mm. Ah. He's one step ahead of the police and the police, you know, it's uh, from least I'm not saying it's one step ahead on everything he does, but yeah. you know, sometimes inside information. So if he you knows know, all the information, mm, he knows yeah. what to do ahead. Yeah, so knows what to do next. Maybe. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Parkway Killer. It started back in 1986. Two young women, Kathy Thomas and Rebecca Dowski, failed to return from their evening drive along the parkway in Virginia. When their bodies were discovered in those very same woods weeks later, how savage the crime scene was left authorities realizing they were dealing with one haunting reality. A serial killer was on the prowl, but he was just getting warmed up. Over the next three years, couple after couple would go missing under eerily similar circumstances pulled off onto those secluded parkway turnouts, likely for a quiet moment together, and just like that, vanished into thin air. There are no signs of struggle. There are just personal effects scattered in the woods, haunting reminders of lives abruptly cut short. Four double homicides in all, eight bodies confirmed. But incredibly, two of those young couples were never even found, just gone, as if the killer wanted to compound the anguish by holding on to his trophies. The parkway had to be shut down while this monster continued to stalk its corners. At one point, they had a suspect sketch to go on, but that trail led to another dead end. Three decades later, no arrests, no concrete leads, just fear. You see, this parkway wasn't some forgotten rural route. It cut right through those ideal colonial towns, beloved destinations for vacationing families. The Smiley Face Killers. 
years. So the deal here is that Jealous. there are these retired cops who think they're like a nationwide network of serial killers prowling around targeting over 20 young college guys. As you see, they keep finding these victims' bodies in lakes, rivers, you name it, all drowned under shady circumstances. But the reason why they're linked is that nearby, they'd find these smiley face graffiti markings like some messed up calling card. Now on the surface, these looked like your typical accidental drownings. Boys being boys, having too many brews, and taking an unfortunate dip. But these cops aren't buying it. Too many similarities across different states for it to just be a coincidence. They think these college boys are getting snatched up, knocked out cold, and then dumped in the water once the killers have had their fun. A sort of weird game for these people. Some people are skeptical, saying it's all circumstantial evidence, but the amount of cases they've linked to it, you can't deny there's something fishy going on. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that being a um, logical. You think yeah. it'd be knocked out though? Just be be able to link with the damage because I mean it takes a bit of bit of force, doesn't it, to knock knock someone out in the first place? Mm. It's doing that first, so yeah. you think there'd be some sort of evidence of that. Yeah, but at the same time, but, if it's happening all over and they're finding these smiley faces, it, what they're saying there is some kind of like game. Hmm. Yeah, who knows what goes on on the dark web? True, true. Ma true. Max, you know what goes on on the dark web. <laughs> But, you know, who knows what goes on in circumstances like that where you, you know, you people sort of like around the country as a network. Yeah. I think the cops True. might be on something. Yeah. I think it might be right. Yeah. Mm. The thing with this is a lot of the, not all of them, because there was some fairly recently in like 2022, but a yeah. lot of them were, seems to me, predated like the advent of DNA and mm. things like that. Yeah. And it's sort of like after that and DNA started to become more mm. prevalent that, you know, you didn't seem to get that many really yeah, after yeah, the, like, maybe the nineties where, yeah. you know, cause it is easy, easy to pick up evidence yeah. and isn't it? Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why all these ones that are still that haven't been found seem to be from that quite a bit ago. Yeah. Mm. Uh, not all of them, but you know, quite a few of them do. Just mad though. But, it? We were saying just, what was it last week or week before that you don't get many serial killers nowadays? No, not at all. And then it's a bunch well, on yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> nice little segue onto yeah, this video. No, right? yeah. <laughs> Certainly ones where it's, you know, unsolved as well. I mean, yeah, I just find some it, of them you think, yeah, wow, multiple bodies should lead to some kind of a uh, pattern and link. You think so, wouldn't well, you? Or a calling card yeah. as well, like a smiley mm. face. Like yeah. that's going to be something. Yeah, the, the, the shit one. I think the cops are on something there. Yeah, 100%. Mm, yeah, definitely. Enjoyed that. But, yeah. Hope mm. you guys enjoyed it as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.